Most of us are already familiar with a graphic equalizer like this one. Some of us may even be familiar with vocoders, if only for Kraftwerk's famous robot voice. But how many of us did know that these two devices are close relatives? The link between them is the concept of filter bank, like our Fumana. Let's dive into that. Let's start with filters. In its most abstract form, a filter is a circuit that takes an audio signal and removes some of its harmonic content. We can have a low-pass filter that removes the high frequencies, or we can have a high-pass filter that removes the low ones. We can also have filters that remove both the high and the low frequencies at the same time, and they are called band-pass filters. They are often built by placing a high and a low-pass filter in series, but that is not always the case. And there are also notch filters that remove the central part of the spectrum, and they are often built by placing a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter in parallel. Anyway, the point is that most filters allow us to control the point at which the signal ceases to pass, which is the cutoff frequency. But there is another filter design that does not involve a controllable cutoff frequency. How do we shape our sound then? The answer is both simple and very complex by stacking more filters. We can create complex filtering scenarios by routing a signal through an array of bandpass filters tuned to specific frequency and then controlling their individual amplitude. As a result, we can cut or boost specific portions of our sound spectrum with surgical precision, which was impossible to do with a single filter even with variable cutoff frequency. If this sounds familiar, it's because this is roughly how equalizers work. We slice a sound into relevant bands and then we control the their amplitude, like bass, mid or trebles. The more bands we have, the more precise our equalizer will be. In the world of classic analog synthesizers, there are some iconic modules built around this concept. For example, the Moog 907 fixed filter bank and the Bukla 296 spectral processor. Even if they look very different, we can see that both have fixed frequency bandpass filters with attenuators that can be sliders or knobs. Among the many differences, we can see, for example, that the bands are tuned to different frequencies, but this is a design choice. The Moog filter does not have any CV inputs, but it features a high pass and a low pass filter at the two extremes. The Bukla, on the other hand, has tons of CV inputs and generally speaking looks more complex. The 296 interface and design was the main idea behind the concept of our Fumana, but we will get into that in a minute. First of all, we must answer one very specific question. Is a filter bank just a fancy name for an EQ? Well, not quite, because the primary purpose of an EQ was originally to restore the audio spectra altered by the recording equipment, so it should have made the sound equal to the original source, hence the name. With the development of mixing techniques, the equalizers were also used for more drastic adjustments, but their primary purpose was nearly always the audio fidelity. On the other hand, the filters were mainly used in analog synthesizers to alter the timbre of a sound deliberately, so fidelity was not the main concern. Of course, one can find some practical differences between equalizers and filter banks, for example the fact that, generally speaking, an equalizer can boost a band while a filter bank usually reaches unity gain, or the fact that an equalizer can just attenuate the band while a filter bank can shut it off completely, but the technical distinction between the two devices is actually very blurred. So we can say that the biggest difference between equalizers and filters is mainly theoretical. We use an equalizer to correct the sound and we use a filter to change it. So let's take our filter bank, which is our Fumana, and see if and how it changes our sound. Now today we are going to focus on some specific patches and we might take something for granted. So if you want to learn more about how Fumana works, stay in touch because in a week we will upload a detailed tutorial. When it will be out I will put a link in the description and also up here. First of all let's duplicate a sawtooth with the 333. Then patch one copy to the CGM mixer and one to the main input of Fumana. We may adjust the input gain if the signal is too hot or too low. There is a reason why there are two gain knobs, but we will see that later on in this video. Finally, patch the all output to another CGM channel. We are using this waveform because it's very rich in harmonics and it will thus pass through more bands. Let's adjust the gain levels and hear the differences. We can hear that even with the sliders completely flat, there is a slight difference with the dry sound. 
Other common sounds to test this equipment are white and pink noise, and in both cases we can hear that Fumana has a more colored sound. Still, if we like this color, we can easily use it to equalize any sound using the sliders. We didn't use a sine wave on purpose, because it has only one harmonic, the fundamental. For this reason, it will generally sit only within a single band, thus making the whole filter bank idea rather pointless. Each slider also has a CV input. We can sum an external voltage and automate the band's amplitude. It is summed to the slider position. Beside many similarities with the 296 interface and concept, Fumana has an original design with some very big differences. So the most evident is the frequency of each band and we already said that there is no fixed rule for that. Fumana's bands are more spread out and they cover a wider range as opposed to the Bugla. This has some pros and cons that we will see later on. We tune the central bands, the one that go from band 2 to band 15, roughly 5.5 semitones apart from each other. So why such an odd and apparently unmusical number? Because if they were tuned to a consonant interval like a fifth or an octave, every sound that by accident crosses that specific frequency would be overly emphasized as opposed to other sounds who don't, because the main purpose of a filter bank is to treat every sound equally. The frequency of band 1 and 16 depart from this rigid scheme, because we can say that we chose them by taste according to our best definition of sub bass and upper end. Anyway, the Bugla 296 had three more clever features that caught our attention, which are the odd and even distinction, the program control section, and the spectral transferring function. We implemented some similar features on Fumana, but as always we made some dramatic changes, so let's go through them one by one. First, odd and even. The Bugla 296 allowed you to split the 16 bands into two groups of 8, which were the odd and the even ones. You could have sent a signal to all the 16 bands and then used the two groups of 8 separately. Or you could have patched the two different sounds to the odd and even bands, blending them in the all out. Output. Finally, you could just have routed two sounds through the two groups and used their independent outputs. This distinction is also on Fumana, but with two differences. The inputs are semi-normal, so that if we patch only one cable, it will go through all the bands. If we want to route a sound differently across the odd and even distinction, we can use the two attenuators without the need to repatch the input cable. Then, we added an additional low-pass filter at 18 kHz to smoothen the all output, but we bypass it when we use the odd or even outputs, so that you can have even more options. The program control section allowed you to voltage control the amplitude of multiple bands at once through two parameters. It created a sort of bell-like curve across many bands, with the bands in the middle having a high amplitude, getting progressively softer towards the extremes. The first parameter defined the central frequency, the one with the highest amplitude, and the second parameter defined the width of the bell, from 1 to almost 8 bands per side. And the result was a sort of uh, bandpass filter with variable frequency and variable Q. On Fumana we have three parameters instead of two. The first one defines the amplitude of the central frequency, which can also be negative, more on this soon. The center knob defines the central frequency and the width knob determines the spread. If we set all the faders to the lower position, we can have our fake bandpass filter with variable gain, cutoff frequency and Q. If we set all the faders to the upper position, we can take advantage of the negative side of the first knob and remove some bands, like a notch filter. This is why this knob is called peak notch. All these parameters are voltage controllable. We also added another feature on Fumana, which is the tilt function. It emphasizes the high end and attenuates the low end, or vice versa. 
It is almost like a seesaw, where the central bands are almost never affected. The third feature was perhaps the deepest of the Bukla 296, the spectrum transfer function, which was mislabeled in some units as a spectral bias. On the 296, the sound filtered by the 16 bands also fed the 16 envelope followers, which followed the amplitude of the sound passing through the corresponding band. With a high amplitude, they output a high voltage, and vice versa. So by using the CV resulting from an envelope follower to control the amplitude of another band, one could transfer the energy of the first band to the second one. So when done at a larger scale, this is the working principle of vocoders. That is why we mentioned them at the beginning of this video. A vocoder uses two sounds, which we can call carrier and modulator. The carrier is usually a rich sound like a salted wave, while the modulator is usually a human voice. The vocoder slices both sounds through two filter banks tuned to the same frequencies. The modulator's filter bank does not output any sound. Instead, it outputs an envelope that follows the signal's amplitude of that band. Each envelope then controls the amplitude of the corresponding carrier's band, which will open and close the bandpass filter's amplifiers according to the energy of the modulator's bands. This is why vocoding is also called spectral transferring. It transfers a sound's spectral footprint to another with a completely different timbre. The 296 allowed you to transfer the energy of the odd bands to the even ones, and vice versa. So by patching a vocal sound to the odd input and a synth sound to the even one, and then turning on the transfer function of the odd bands over the even ones, one could have used them as modulator and carrier respectively. It was thus possible to use the 296 as an 8-band vocoder with excellent results. However, by transferring the odd bands over the even ones or vice versa, there was never a perfect match of the spectral content of the two sounds. It was uh, somehow offset by one band. On Fumana we have a second array of bandpass filters specific for spectral processing. They are tuned to the same frequencies as the carrier ones, providing a precise spectral transfer. Let's try to patch one oscillator to one of the main inputs and another one to a mod one. First, we sweep through the carrier spectrum by changing the modulator's frequency. Envelope follower LEDs are also a visual tool to help us understand the spectral content of the modulating signal. For example, if we patch a sine wave to the modulation input, we will see that only one or at least two bands are lighting up, according to which frequency band our sine wave is occupying. If you want to hear something like the classic Bukla 8 on 8 spectral transferring, you just need 8 patch cables. First, patch them to the envelope follower outputs and then reroute them to the desired bands, for example, the odd over the even ones. Then, use the main and mod attenuators to remove the other side of the carrier and the modulator. If we replace the modulator with a vocal sound, we obtain a vocoder. However, we said that we tuned the bands roughly 5.5 semitones apart from each other. This may not be specifically designed for the human voice, since some bands are way below the human vocal range. However, it allows you to use any other sound as a modulator, like drums. The odd and even distinction also works for the spectral transfer circuit. We can use two different sounds to modulate a single carrier's odd and even bands, or use a single sound to modulate two carriers, or finally use the two circuits independently as two 8 bands vocoders. And this is our introduction on filter banks and spectral transferring. If you want to learn more about Fumana starting from the basics, we will upload a detailed, hands-on tutorial next week. When it is out, I will link it here. I hope that this conversation was helpful and I'll see you next time.